Welcome to Midlife Matters, where we celebrate women's wisdom and wit. I'm Georgia and Lucy, your host, and I'm delighted to introduce today's guest, Terry Williams, who is a housing counselor with Capital for Change. Welcome, Terry. Thank you very much, Georgia. It's nice to be here. Great. So people find themselves unable to keep up with their mortgage payment. Yes. They come to you, and how does that work? Well, one of the first things I do is to speak with them to find out what's caused um, the, the delinquency, what's the hardship that caused them to be in this position. Um, from there, we will sit down and go over their finances. We need to see what the income is that's coming into the household, what are the expenses that have to be paid out of that income, and what's left over. Because when we approach the servicer, the mortgage servicer, to ask for assistance, we need to be sure that there's going to be sufficient income mm -hmm. to make the mortgage payment if they're able to make adjustments for them. Um, and during this time, we're also able to look at where's your money going? You know, a lot of times when we do the budget sheet, it will show that they should have a surplus of income after the expenses. And if they don't have that income, then we need to try to figure out what's going on with the money. Where is it going? So that's a good opportunity for people to really look at their finances, to look at their spending, and not only see what they're spending, but where they're spending it. And that gives them the opportunity to make adjustments, make changes, in order to put themselves in a better financial position. And what are some typical things people overlook? I think the things that people most tend to overlook are just the everyday things that they may be spending money on without realizing it. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're a coffee drinker, you're buying a cup of coffee every day. You know, Dunkin' Donuts coffee is now, what, three, three, four dollars for a large coffee? Mm -hmm. You know, so maybe you could go to Cumberland Farms instead, you know, and get it cheaper. Um, for people that smoke, cigarettes are really expensive. You know, so it's some of those little things that we tend to do out of habit without even thinking or realizing how much money is being spent on those things. Mm -hmm. And then one of the other things that comes up a lot is the things that people don't pay for on a regular basis. So for instance, your car taxes. You know, the bill comes out twice a year, so people tend to forget about it, you know, but maybe it's something that you need to budget for on a monthly basis so you don't have that surprise, you know, twice a year when it comes out. Yeah, so things like that tend to, people tend to overlook, and that can have a big impact on the budget. Do you work with a lot of partners, m more solo people? Um, because I would imagine looking at spending habits, mm. partners may have some disagreements about priorities. It, it's interesting if I'm dealing with a household with two adults or whatever the situation is, I like for them all to be engaged in the process. Right. You know, sometimes you're dealing with just one person. You know, they're providing all the information and they're taking the documents back. But I really like to have everyone involved because everyone needs to know what's going on. Uh, I've had lots of situations where um, the breadwinner or, or the, let's say the, the man and the, mm -hmm. the, the husband will pass away suddenly. Mm -hmm. And the wife has no idea what's going on with the mortgage, what's going on with the bills, because he did everything. You know, so it's really, really important that everyone, every adult, know what's going on with that money in the household. Where is it going? What needs to be paid? What's what's our debt look like? You know, yeah. what are what does our savings look like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really, really important. And about how long does the process take? Well, it can it varies. The time varies. It depends on the severity of the delinquency. Um, it also depends on how quickly the servicer, the mortgage servicer, moves. You know, sometimes people can be delinquent, and if they've been in communication with the mortgage servicer, sometimes they're allowed additional time to try to reconcile the situation. Um, a lot of times, I would say the average is about 90 days, maybe, before they have an answer mm -hmm. as to what the servicer may be able to offer them. And what would you say is your, well, first of all, what do you define as success? To me, success is getting the homeowner to a position that's comfortable for them. And it doesn't always mean saving a home because sometimes that's just not a reality. It's mm -hmm. not viable that they're going to be able to keep their homes. But if we're not able to help them keep their homes, maybe we can put them in a different situation where they're still housed, you know, but it's, it's a different situation now. It looks different, where that means rental or moving in with a family member or whatever. It can be different for every individual. 
But, you know, success is getting people beyond where they are and getting them to a permanent position. And how does your success rate tend to come out? Well, I, I think we do relatively well. You know, a lot of it's not within our control. Mm -hmm. You know, we're just a counseling agency. Right. And all we can do is help the borrower to recognize what options are available to them. Mm -hmm. So I would think we do fairly, I would say maybe to 80 to 90 percent of the folks nice. that we work with come to some positive resolution. And yeah. how do most of them find you? We get a lot of referrals through the court system because when someone is actually in the foreclosure process, when they're actually served with that summons and complaint, which is the formal start of the foreclosure process, at that time they're given information about the housing counseling agencies in the state. And because we're capital for change, we're near the top of the list, yeah. so I tend to get those calls. So we get a lot of referrals that way. Of course, the lenders send out different information to the borrower, so if they're reading that information, they will find us listed there. And then sometimes it's word of mouth from past clients. You know, they will refer other people. And sometimes it's just a conversation, you know, but it's there to have them. They, they can have access to that information and talk to someone and really see what their options are. What would a typical caseload look like for you? Well, it depends. Again, there are times, for instance, during the pandemic, we were just bombarded with cases, you know, because people were dealing with the delinquency and not really having a lot of options. Then the state came up with the My Home CT program, which is a really great program, which is helping homeowners that are dealing with mortgage delinquency, especially if it's impacted by COVID, which mm -hmm. just about everyone is at this point. So the caseload was kind of high, but it's starting to dwindle now because those people are getting into the process. They're getting that grant money, so they're been able to resolve their mortgage delinquency. So it's starting to bottom out. But by the same token, some of the folks that got the assistance early on are now starting to come to the end of the assistance. Okay. And they may not still be in a position to fully make those mortgage payments. So now we'll probably see a new wave of homeowners coming in that may still need assistance. Do you have eligibility requirements? We don't. We will work with anyone, anyone in, in the state of Connecticut, any homeowner. Um, the eligibility requirements will come in re in regard to whatever program it is they're trying to access. Mm -hmm. Yeah, different programs have different eligibility requirements. And you are involved with some of the different programs? Uh, well, we make referrals to different programs. Mm -hmm. Our first goal is to work with the lender, the mortgage servicer, because you're, they already have the, the mortgage, right. you know, and it's, sometimes it's just a matter of restructuring the debt. There is another program called the Emergency Mortgage Assistance Payment Program. That's through the Connecticut Housing Finance Authority, so that's an option. Of course, we now have the My Home CT, which was uh, developed in response to the pandemic. So those are some of the options that we have. And then there's also the option of if you can't keep your home, you know, you can put it on the market for sale. If there's equity, there's a short sale option, there's a deed in lieu option. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of things that can happen before an actual foreclosure takes place. Okay. Yeah. Well, that sounds like very meaningful work. It is. It's, it's rewarding in that um, you get the satisfaction of knowing you've helped someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's really important. Well, yeah. at a very critical juncture. Yeah, yeah, and sometimes it's just giving people an ear, you know, mm -hmm. when they, they need to vent or, you know, get a little, get things off their chest because a lot of folks just don't think that there's help out there okay. or they're hesitant, you know, to reach out for help and the help is available All and right. at no cost. Well, I hope <laughs> this reaches some of those folks. Yes, yes, so do I.